Hello, everyone. I'm Stephanie Armland, the director of our team programs at Step Up, and I'm honored to welcome you to the very first Explore Pathways session during week one of career camp with NGE. Hopefully you made it to the welcome session right before this, but if not, no worries. We are happy you're here for this session. I'd like to kick off this event by taking a moment to acknowledge and thank you all for joining us. I'd also like to recognize all of those that are experiencing Step Up for the first time today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Give us a hello in the chat and let us know what team you are on and what you're most excited to gain from today's session. We look forward to getting to know you. And I'll pass it to my co-facilitator, Jasmira, to introduce herself. Hello, everyone. I'm Jess Mara Jones, the manager of Young Adult Programs, and welcome to our first Spirit Day of Explore Pathways. Today, we are rolling with a team spirit theme, Go Team Orange. That means career camp attendees are representing their team by showing off their team color in as many ways as they can. We'd love to see what team you're representing in the chat. So since it's the first day of our spirit themes, I feel like I need to let you know that there will be a prize for the winning team as well as the winning teen and young adult. So you can win by attending, networking, and engaging during the sessions and showing off your spirit all through the week during our theme days. If you need a reminder, remember all of our ways that you can earn points are in your welcome packet, as well as reach out to your camp counselor if you have any questions. So now that you know how to gain points for your team this week, I'm going to go into some helpful reminders for this virtual session. So before we officially get started, I'd love to share a few of our usual friendly reminders. Everyone, please take a moment and adjust your display name to reflect three things. Your name, your role, so whether you are a teen, a young adult, or a mentor, and the pronouns you use. You can look at the screen and see what I mean. It's especially important to put down your role so that we can sort you into the right breakout rooms later. We love to ask that everyone who is able to turn on your cameras to please do so. We would love to see your face. Even though we're not physically in person, we love to create that feeling and it supports us in creating an intimate, safe, and brave space for everyone. All of our mics will be on mute until we go into our breakout session. So feel free to add your positive comments, questions, and reactions in the chat box, which we will be monitoring. And if you need support with anything at all throughout the event, please feel free to message Danielle, who will be monitoring the chat. Back to you, Stephanie. Thanks, Jasmine. So our Explore Pathway series is an exciting opportunity for our audiences to get an inside look into various roles, industries, and companies that they may be interested in exploring. Our goal is for you all to express your voice among your peers and mentors and increase your beliefs in your personal ability to shape your own path. You all will connect with, listen to, and learn from company experts in order to build knowledge of life paths and professional opportunities that may be available with various companies. And today, we're so grateful to be able to partner with NGE to take a deeper look at all the dynamic career paths available with their firm. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at today's agenda. We're going to start with a game of Explore Pathways, This or That. And after our fun icebreaker game, our special guest speakers from NGE will tell us more about what it's like to work at NGE. They'll lead you through an activity that's focused on legal issues and knowing your rights. And then we'll head into breakout rooms where you'll have the opportunity to continue making connections through networking. We'll then end the session with reflections and share upcoming announcements and closeouts. Mentors, your role is to model participation by having your cameras on, being present, engaging in the chat, sharing knowledge of various roles within the legal industry, and providing guidance on how our young people can be, be successful in their early step, career steps during the mentorship breakout session. Excuse me, guys. Does that sound good? Great. Let's go. Just Mara. Thanks, Stephanie. All right, in true step up fashion, it is time for an icebreaker. So let's get into our this or that game. We want to learn more about your abilities as they pertain to different career opportunities. This fun game will help you determine if you might be best at creating information or managing information. 
I'll go through four slides of this or that questions and tell us in the chat if you would pick A or B and make sure to note if you are picking more A's or B's, okay? So put it in the chat, but also make a, a note if you answer more A's to questions or more B's. All good? All right, let's get started. So are you better at A, compiling ideas, or B, comparing similarities or differences? Let's see those answers in the chat. I'm seeing a lot of A's. Let's pop this up, a few B's. All right, it's looking kind of even now. Let's see, I would say, mm, that's hard. I'm gonna go with B for myself, just in case anyone is interested. All right, give a few more seconds. We'll go to the second question. Okay, thank you. Are you better at A, gathering information by observing others or B, working with numbers? That's easy for me, gathering information. Working with numbers, not my friend. I see a lot of people are on my side with that. Love that. Definitely an observer. We have a few people that are great with numbers. We need that balance. All right, next question. Are you better at imagining and creating new ideas or planning a process for achieving a goal? Also a great question. I am a chronic planner, so I'm gonna go with B for myself. I see a, a good balance as well. All right, and final question. Are you better at A, researching information or B, problem solving or seeing problems? Mm, lots of variety here. I see it pretty even on this one. These are challenging. You all know yourselves very well, which is very impressive because I'm having to think about them. I'm gonna go with B for myself. All right, so let's compile those letters. I see Leah said you said A a lot. Awesome, okay, so let me know in the chat if you said A for most of your answers or B for most of your answers. And if you answered mostly A's, then you may be better with gathering and creating information. And if you answered mostly B's, then you may be best at managing that information. So knowing this information about yourself can help you figure out what types of roles and careers to explore. So keep that in mind throughout the week. As we get to know more of our strengths, it will help us as we explore what careers may be a good fit for us. Okay. That was so much fun. I don't know about other people, but I love those little if-thens so I can learn a little bit more about myself. Um, and I hope that you did too, just to start us off the beginning of the week to keep in mind, who are you with these this and that uh, options? So now I'm so thrilled to welcome the NGE team. Thank you all so much for joining us. We're looking forward to hearing more about you and your journeys. Let's give a warm welcome to Sonia Menon, NGE's Chief Operating Officer, who will be leading us through a company overview. Let's welcome the speakers that will be taking us through an activity to learn more about the practice of law and knowing your rights and engaging legal systems. For that portion, we're gonna have Angela Elbert, Beth Radishel, and Sonia Rosenberg. Let's thank all of our speakers for joining us today. And I will now pass it over to Sonia for, from NGE for the company overview. Thank you, Stephanie, and I'm so excited to be here today. Um, we did this last year and it was so much fun and it's so great to see where everybody's from reading on the chat, people from Texas and from New York and from Chicago. And I saw Arika from Delhi, India, which was very exciting. So thank you all for joining us today. We're very excited to share a little bit about our law firm and take you through some fun exercises as well. Um, as Stephanie said, my name is Sonia Menon, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Neil Gerber and Eisenberg. We're a law firm. We're um, based out of Chicago, um, although we do work all over the world and the country. Um, our physical offices are here in Chicago. So just a little bit about us. Um, our firm was started 37 years ago in 1986, when two small law firms came together to form Neil Gerber and Eisenberg. And at the time, 37 years ago, we were the largest startup firm in Chicago history. 
of course, that wouldn't be the case today, but it was kind of a big deal in those days to have a firm of our size created in Chicago. And uh, we have continued to grow in strength over the years and continue to add our different practice areas. But with all of that growth, we've continued to stay um, with our home in Chicago and our roots in Chicago. And we do so much work within Chicago and the Chicago community. And through that, with groups like Step Up, we're able to do um, so many things natural, nationally and touch so many people nationally as well. Um, so just a little bit about our structure. Um, as you know, we're a law firm, which means that we have lawyers who practice law and help their clients with their legal problems. We have 131 lawyers at our firm who practice law in many different areas. And I'll talk a little bit about the different areas that we practice law in. Uh, but interestingly, to support all the lawyers, we have about 120 um, non-lawyers who we have call as our professional staff um, who also work in the law firm. And their roles can vary from being a paralegal, a project assistant, a legal secretary, to people who work in our IT department, our HR department, to people who do training and development and care about our well-being, um, to people who do research for the lawyers in our library and research department. So um, it's really a full service that we provide. And I'm in that category of people who are supporting our lawyers to be able to do their best work on an everyday basis. So let me tell you a little bit about the kind of work we do uh, as a law firm um, with our clients. Um, I would say that our work falls into four big buckets, and there's so much that goes on in here, but we basically support uh, clients who are typically corporations. So we're not doing, for example, immigration or um, criminal work. Our work is very much civil corporate work. Uh, we have a business area of law, and I'll dig into that a little bit more. Uh, we do litigation or dispute type resolutions. Uh, we have an estate planning and private wealth group and an intellectual property group. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about what these areas are, just to give you some context. So the business area of law is when, you know, for example, two companies um, want to merge together or one wants to buy another company. We deal with those kinds of deals, mergers and acquisitions that you may have read about in the papers. Um, real estate, you know, somebody wants to purchase um, a commercial or a real estate property, and they want to deal with taxes related to all of these mergers and acquisitions, we help them with all of those kinds of things. So basically, we're either representing one company or helping in some way to support any kind of uh, transactions and transactional business. And sometimes we're dealing with employment issues and traditional labor issues, which we have a labor, labor and employment group. And sometimes a company just wants to financially restructure they might go through different processes, bankruptcy or just a restructuring process, and we help them with all of those as well. Our next area is our disputes area. Um, and this is, you know, sometimes uh, clients have disputes with other clients or other vendors, and we um, support them by providing them with legal services in areas of trials, appeals, insurance policyholder work. You might have seen in the chat one of our mentors today is Angela Elbert. She chairs our insurance policyholder practice. You can ask more questions about that in the breakout session. Um, we do do labor and employment, uh, bankruptcy and taxation work when there is disputes in those areas, then we support our clients in those areas as well. Our third big bucket um, that we support our clients on is private wealth services. And this may be an unusual area that people are not as familiar with, but it's basically thinking about um, family-owned businesses, entrepreneurs, private businesses who also have to manage their own wealth. They have to have estate planning, planning for their estate, structuring generational wealth that they carry down different generations. Um, sometimes they have charitable planning, you know, they have philanthropic organizations that they support as well. And then sometimes when people pass away, you have to manage their estates and go through probate. And um, occasionally there's disputes. I'm sure you've read about some of this stuff when families have disputes and we get involved with that as well. So it's really managing the private wealth of individuals and families. And that's a big area of our practice as well. And the last bucket that I'd like to talk about is our intellectual property area. Um, and this is really thinking about your intellectual property. So whether it is a patent or a trademark or a copyright, we could support you as a client. Um, there are so many newer areas within IP, which is the short form for intellectual property that we have been involved with, like advertising, social media didn't exist 25 years ago, but now these are growing areas. Privacy with all of the cyber issues, information governance, technology transactions. These are all very interesting areas that we support our clients on under intellectual property. 
And to showcase a little bit of who our clients are, we have so many different clients. Some um, have well-known names and some don't. So if you're thinking about health, healthcare and the healthcare world, we have Blue Cross and Blue Shield as a client of ours. We have Abbott and AbbVie as clients of ours. If you're thinking about food and beverage, we have McDonald's, IHOP, PepsiCo as clients of ours. Or maybe you're thinking about where you purchase fancy furniture, Crate and Barrel is one of our big clients as well, and Google is a client of ours. And there's so many more, but these were just names that we thought that you might recognize and be familiar with as the type of clients that we provide legal services to. Um, but beyond this, what's important for us and what we think makes Neil Gerber and Eisenberg so special is our culture. Um, we really care about how we interact with each other, how we treat and respect each other, and what our value system is. We work very hard and we want to be able to enjoy what we do and work with people who are respectful to each other. And so, um, as we said over here, our culture includes us being proud of being um, inclusive as an environment, being collaborative as people. We're not competitive with each other at all. We're very collaborative and we support each other. And we're very entrepreneurial in our spirit. That's how the firm was formed 37 years ago. And we continue to, to do that and be in that way. And so in terms of showcasing our culture and what's important in terms of our own values, uh, we care very much about supporting diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, you know, really thinking about our population and having a diverse population, we believe very strongly that uh, when you have a more diverse group or a more diverse team, you have better solutions, you come up with better results, you challenge each other in different ways. And so it's not just something that we say, we actually see the results and we believe in it. We believe also that everybody doesn't start on an equal footing. And so equity is very important to us. And then just having diverse people in the room is not enough. So we really care about inclusion as well. Um, and we do this by really engaging our teams in many different activities. And if you can go back one slide, I just wanted to showcase some of the things that we do um, to bring our people together to, so that they can experience our culture. We do a lot of fun events, some are just very casual. This week we have a protein shake break that Rachel has organized where we'll just get together and drink some very healthy shakes. Sometime we go, sometimes we go for walks to Grant Park together. Um, we had a potluck throwdown, which was an event where people brought their own food from their culture or their background, which is really interesting. So our goal is always to bring us together and share in our cultures and our diversity and make sure that while we are doing all of that, that we stay well and we care about the environment as well. So all of that encompasses our corporate social responsibility and our commitment to our people as well as our environment and our community. Um, that was a very quick few minutes about us as Neil Gerber Eisenberg, not just as a firm, but who we think of as ourselves and what we care about. And I'd love to hand the baton on to Angela, who's going to start with the first scenario, I think. Thanks, Sonia. Thanks, everybody, for inviting me. Um, we're going to do a little fun exercise, um, learning a little bit about some of the legal work that we do and some of which just we've learned about when we were in law school. The first couple of slides are mine, and I'm going to, if you could just um, go forward. The first one I'm going to talk about is sort of, this is the concept of know your rights. The question is, and please put your answer in the chat, in your favorite TV show, a character shouts, I plead the fifth. What right is that character talking about? A, the right to bear arms, B, the right to express oneself, C, the right to have a lawyer present, or D, the right to stay silent. I'll give you a chance to put your answers in. Great, I'm seeing a lot of consistent responses, which is fantastic. And the right response is D, the right, the right to stay silent. Um, when characters in movies and TV shows say they plead the fifth, they are talking about a specific part of the Fifth Amendment, that's what we're talking about here, sometimes called the self-incrimination clause, your right to stay silent and not incriminate yourself or get yourself into any trouble, protects you from being forced to tell police or anyone questioning you at trial, anything that might reveal you are guilty of a crime. Whether you did something wrong or not, you don't have to say anything if you don't want to. Um, that's part of the Fifth Amendment. The Fifth Amendment also talks about the um, right to grand jury, um, the prevention of double jeopardy, due process and takings or some other things in the Fifth Amendment, but definitely the right to self uh, the right to uh, not self incriminate yourself is the big thing we hear about with respect to the Fifth Amendment. So let's move to the next one. Okay, your friend draws a rainbow flag on his backpack in support of the LGBTQIA community. He says that no one in school can tell him that he has to cover or erase it. 
doing so would violate his First Amendment rights. Is that true or false? A for true, B for false. What do you think? Please put it in the chat. Great, thanks everybody. Looks like we've got we've got a lot of uh, consistent responses here as well. And the answer here is true. Um, the First Amendment doesn't guarantee just freedom of speech, probably what you were thinking about. You thought maybe it was a trick question. It also covers nonverbal and symbolic forms of expression like the way you dress and the art you make. Um, students don't shed their constitutional rights when you walk into the schoolhouse door. Uh, but keep in mind that schools do have the power to regulate students during school hours and on school property. Um, and so, for example, schools are allowed to have a dress code, um, but those are based on preventing disruptions to learning. So something that prevents disruptions to learning is something they are permitted to do. Schools aren't allowed to ban personal expression just because your, I, your ideas or your opinions are, un, are controversial or, or unpopular. Um, you have the right to speak out, hand out flyers and petitions, and wear expressive clothing or armbands or drawn flags in school, as long as you don't disrupt the functioning of the school or violate the school's content neutral policies. So content neutral policies mean rules that have nothing to do with the message you're expressing. So like a dress code. So for example, a school can say you can't wear a hat but they can't say you can't wear a hat that has that's pink or that's that has the pride rainbow colors on it. So that would be a distinction um, unless it's a disruption of the school generally. They can, they can uh, still uh, regulate school uh, for those reasons as well. So that's uh, a couple of um, amendments. The first amendment also talks about um, the freedom of religion, the freedom of the press, the freedom of assembly, and the freedom of petition. But freedom of speech and symbolic expression is really an important part of the First Amendment. With that, I'll pass it over to Beth, who's going to do the next one. All right. Hi, everybody. That last one was tricky because it's kind of like an it depends, right? But uh, but so we, we got a lot of good answers there. So next, we're going to talk about attending a protest. Uh, you want to attend a protest to support an important cause. Where can you go so you have the strongest, most protected right to protest? A public park, a shopping mall, in front of a politician's home, or in your school cafeteria? I see some answers coming in, a lot of the same. Some folks saying what not to do, which is also a good answer. All right, I think there seems to be a favorite, which I think you all are very smart because the answer is correct. It's A, public park. And again, this is talking about the um, First Amendment uh, and it protects your right to assemble and express your views through protest. Your rights are strongest when you're in what's known as a traditional public forum is the legal word for it. Uh, us lawyers like our, our mumbo jumbo words. And that includes things like streets, sidewalks, public parks. You also have the right to speak out in other public areas like plazas in front of government buildings, places like that. But when you do something like that, you have to be careful that you're not going to interfere with the purpose of the business that's going on in that building. So a park is a much better place for something like a protest. Also, as Angela mentioned, the First Amendment also can protect your rights at school, but that can be somewhat limited. You have the right to certainly speak out, hand out flyers and petitions at school on a more limited basis, but your school could discipline you for things like, you know, a walkout form of a protest for missing class based on other policies that they might have. And each school is going to have their own policies as it relates to unexcused absences and truancy. So, if you're looking to organize a protest or participate in a protest, you're going to be most protected if you organize it and advocate for your views in a public forum, such as a park or a street, um, and preferably outside of school hours. I think next, I'm actually kicking it already over to Sonia to take the next two. Thank you, Beth. All right, let's move on to the next one, which I think is hilarious, by the way. So I think my neighbor's house is ugly, and I wish that my uh, that my yard was bigger. Makes sense. I want to knock over his house, build myself a huge yard for family gatherings. I take care of my land better than my neighbor does. I have a right to knock over his house. 
thoughts, comments. Can you imagine if we could just knock over our neighbor's ugly house for a bigger yard for ourselves, what chaos we'd live in? All right, I'm seeing, <laughs> yep, I'm seeing these in the chat. Yep, there would be some phone calls that would need to be made. Agreed, agreed. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. I think we're all in agreement here. Sadly, the answer is false. I wish we could knock down that ugly house, but we cannot do that. And um, so this is sort of a fun, silly scenario. But the reason that we bring this up is because uh, there is a concept under the law where the government can actually take your private property. Does anyone happen to know what that's called? It's a tricky one. We, we learned it in law school. I didn't know it before then. But any, any chance you know what that might be called when the government can take your property? All right. It's, it's a tough one. Uh, I we wouldn't expect you to know, but if you want to stand out as super cool to your classmates and to some other lawyers who uh, may not, yep, close, foreclosure, yeah, close. Um, yep, history class sounds right. The, the term for it, yes, Anya, you got it, eminent domain, that's exactly right. So um, the government can take your private property, but it has to be for just compensation and it has to be for um, a purpose such as to you know, create national parks or to build a highway or to build a road or something like that. So the Fifth Amendment is the amendment that protects um, the individual's property and limits the government's ability to build on that property. Um, for public use, uh, but for certain reasons, um, and so for public use and for just compensation, if the government pays you a fair price for your property, the government can take your property. So that's the Fifth Amendment. And I think we have time for, for one more, which is fun because it's right up my alley uh, because I do employment law and I advise companies among other things as to what are the kinds of things that are legal and appropriate to do or not do when it comes to your candidates and employees. So suppose you are interviewing for a job uh, or you are uh, part of the interviewing team. Which of these questions is okay for an interviewer to ask? Can you ask what's your biggest weakness? What about, are you pregnant? What about, do you have any disabilities? What about, what religion are you? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm seeing consensus on A and you're exactly right. So we talked about some of the rights that are protected by the Bill of Rights, by the constitution. Now we're talking about some rights uh, that come from federal laws. And the law that we're talking about here is the most uh, frequently used law in my area of practice, which is Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which guarantees uh, that individuals' employments should be free of discrimination, harassment, and retaliation based on protected categories. Um, so uh, the, those protected categories are race, color, religion, sex, and national origin, and state and local governments offer additional protections, for example, based on gender identity and expression, based on um, arrest record, based on family or veteran status, there are a number of additional um, protections that state and local laws provide that the federal laws uh, may not provide. So there are exceptions. Um, so first of all, everybody was correct that what's your biggest weakness is the only appropriate question on that list. We shouldn't be inquiring into folks protected categories, um, including pregnancy status or, or other protected categories such as disabilities or religion or race or anything else. Sometimes there could be exceptions. Um, in the government context, for example, if the government requires employers to ask certain demographic uh, data, but in the private employment context, that is not a thing. So that is not something that an interviewer should ask a candidate. So great job on these. Um, and with that, 
I will pass it back to Beth, I think. Yeah, we've got we've got one more bonus one. <laughs> it, it dovetails nice from the one you just did, Sonia. After getting a job, you also probably need to get an apartment. Uh, and the question now is, which of these questions is okay for a potential landlord to ask you on an apartment rental application? What's your race? What's your credit history? What's your nationality? Or what religion are you? I'm seeing lots of bees. Yeah, we need to make these questions harder for y'all next year, I think. You're really smart. <laughs> a lot of us didn't know these until law school. So yeah, you're all absolutely right. If we want to go to the next slide, the answer is what is your credit history? So one thing to note is that landlord and tenant laws vary a whole ton from state to state and city to city. So depending, I know we've got a lot of cities and uh, different states represented here. Depending on where you live, you might have stronger or weaker protections depending on where you are as a tenant. But one thing is true for everybody, and that's that the Federal Fair Housing Act protects people from discrimination when you're buying a home, when you're renting a home, when you're getting housing assistance nationwide. So that's no matter where you live. And that can prevent discrimination based on race, color, national origin, religion, sex, which includes your gender identity or your sexual orientation, your familial status, which can also include having children, um, and disability. Potential landlords can ask about your credit history and your credit report will show things like how many outstanding loans you have, how many credit cards you have. It shows both good and bad things. And we wanted to flag that since I'm sure we've all been through situations, uh, all of us mentors on the call where we've had to apply for lots of different apartments and, you know, sometimes you apply for five apartments at once and having multiple credit checks in a short span of time can actually hurt your credit. So something we wanted to flag was some recommendation if you're going to apply for a bunch of apartments at once, if you get to that point, consider reducing the number you're applying for at the same time, or ask those landlords if they'll take a free credit report that you run on yourself and provide to them instead of having you know five different landlords run five different credit checks. So um, I don't know how close everyone is to renting apartments here, but something to flag in the memory bank when, when the time comes for it. So I think with that, that is the end of our Know Your Rights game. Thank you all for participating. Uh, Y'all are very smart and capable of answering these questions. And I, I, we're happy to take questions now, but I also think we're, we're gonna jump into breakout rooms where we can have lots of our colleagues on the line too tell you a bit more about what we all do and um, some more details. Absolutely, thank you so much, Beth. And thank you to the whole NDA team. I learned so much every year and those are some really great tips that you just gave Beth about apartment searching. So thank you for the activity as well as the context. So now we're gonna go out into breakout rooms. Like Beth said, this is your time to ask your more specific questions, to talk to the mentors in smaller groups. So make sure you have those questions up. Um, we'll be dropping some networking questions to help guide the conversation. Um, and yeah, let's just have a good time and have some fun. So Danielle, are we ready for a breakout room? Perfect. If you want to join those rooms, then we'll meet back soon. All right, friends, I think we're all back. I don't know about you, but my breakout room went entirely too quick. Happens every time. Um, but I know um, Beth volunteered herself as well as the mentors in our room to reach out to. So would love um, to just open that opportunity up if there are any anybody here that you resonated with that you really want to connect with, please do reach out on LinkedIn. It is a great resource. Um, but let's start with some share outs um, and maybe mentors, if you're able, if you could drop your LinkedIn's in the chat while we go through these last few announcements and share outs, that would be so great. Who would like to start us off with our breakout share outs? Priscilla, I see your hand raised. Yes, please. Hi, so um, in our breakout room, I mainly ask questions about when it comes to, like applying to said jobs. And a lot of the women like Sonia and Rachel talked about how authenticity, like when applying to a workplace is often easier than what you may think. So for me personally, that brought a little bit of comfort and like not putting like, too much effort in it, but just being natural and not trying to be somebody that you're not which is something that they said that I really, really liked. Absolutely, thank you so much for sharing, Priscilla. Um, Brittany, I think you came off mute as well. You wanna share for our group? 
Yeah, of course. So um, something that I found really integral during our conversation was the conversation of skill sets um, and how they can be transferable no matter the industry that you're in. So I believe it was Mandy who shared that before entering the legal field, she was working as a social worker, which I found interesting. Um, and I also shared that I have a background in psychology, but now I work in public relations. So I think maybe a lesson for all of us that we'll, we're finding or have already found is that um, all of the things that we learn along the way is going to serve us no matter the position that we inhabit. So I wanted to share that with everybody. Thank you so much, Brittany. Yes, we have some really great insights on our breakouts. Who else? We have two more breakout rooms. We didn't get a chance to select somebody to share out before um, we ran out of time, but Fiona, Arika, or Diksha, do you, either of you want to share? Can I share? Sure. Yeah, so I asked about financial restructuring that took most of the time of the breakout room and we didn't get to talk much, but I had some, uh, I wanted to know about how uh, firms help them, firms like yours help them financial restructuring and I got a lot of insight in that and the energy was really nice. I got to learn a lot. Hope I definitely am able to use it in the future. It was it was a great breakout session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Arika, for sharing. And we our our conversation started get started rolling just as we got the little flash, um, and we got some really great advice. Would anyone from room one like to share? Um, Sasha, Yasmin, Anaya. Uh, Juliana, any of you, feel free. Or even one of our mentors who gave some great advice. I'd love to hear from you guys too. Uh, I can go ahead, that's all right. Um, I think, I feel like, yeah, like you're right, Stephanie, like we did really hit it off with everyone. Um, and I think it was really important that Ashlyn, I think, yeah, Ashlyn AJ, she mentioned that when she first started off, like knowing what she wanted to, what kind of job industry she wanted to get into, she told us about how important it was to connect and get mentors in that area, especially if you don't have a background or no, don't know where to start. So I think it was really important. And I thought it was interesting that she mentioned that because like, if you don't know where you're going or like you don't have any background or anyone to rely on in that industry, it's good to get connections and show how important networking is when you want to join a certain industry. Thanks. Thank you, Sasha. And that's right. I mean, we even had voices in the room that said, you know, that they had no idea and they were in, you know, mentors was mentioned being history majors and finding that, you know, the law was something that they were, they were, they got interested in later. So, you know, I, like I said, we had a great great conversation and I want to thank everybody who even wasn't in our room for being a part of the conversation and and getting to know each other in these rooms especially in this first session I am thoroughly enjoying career camp and it's just day one so um as we move on uh we're coming to the end of our time together and we have a couple of poll questions only for the mentees, our teens and our young adults. So if you are a teen or a young adult participating with us today, please complete the following two poll questions. Mentors, please do not complete the questions. All right.
right, we gave everyone a few, uh, a little bit of time to complete poll quest questions one and two. And we will now hear from my amazing colleague, Jasmara, some announcements. Thank you, Stephanie. And before we go into announcements, I just wanted to make this quick note because there's so many great LinkedIn's in the chat. So for everyone, if you don't know how to save the chat, when you open up the chat box, there are three little dots next to, if you're on your computer, I'm not sure if it's different on your phone, but there's three little dots next to the smiley face and then you can save chat. So that's the way you can save the chat and go back to all of these great LinkedIn um, links and names that have been dropped in the chat. So don't want you all to miss that opportunity. All right, let's get on to some announcements. So these are for our teens and young adults. Also mentors, if you have any feedback, we would love to hear from you as well. I'm sure there'll be a formal feedback form coming, but please just reach out to your career camp contact if you have any, any thoughts. So. Continuing with our camp theme days, tomorrow is Glam Day. So earn some points for your team by getting creative and glamorous. You can even have a fun Zoom background representing who inspires you to be your full glamorous self. Also remember that you can reference that welcome packet or contact your camp counselor for any more information. Look for those emails at the beginning and the end of each day. And if you're not getting them, please let us know so that we can make sure you're getting everything that you need. And then we'll have one more session today is Explore Pathways with Benefit Cosmetics at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So please join us for that as well. Um, and for those who are new to Career Camp this year, we'll have a little 15 minute connection time at the end of this, this session. So when we log off, you can stay on with us and talk more with us, ask questions about career camp. That'll just be for our teens, young adults, and step-up staff. Also, our intake form, if you have not already, please fill that out. We'll put a link in the chat. Um, this is very important for us to have all of your information, your consent, as well as your address to send you out some great goodies that are given away by a lot of our companies this week. And I'll pass it back to Stephanie. Oh, Stephanie, I think you're yeah. muted. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, ladies. Um, okay. And thank you. Thanks so much for our to our amazing NGE mentors. We are so honored that you joined us today. And as always, thank you to our teens and young adults for choosing to be here with us today and being part of Step Up. Your engagement always inspires us teens and young adults, if you would like to continue to chat with us, we will be staying on for 15 minutes to answer any questions you may have, informally connect with each other, and just have some fun. You get even more points for attending as well, so come hang out. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. Thank you again to MGA for being here.